You're probably wondering why I'm making a video this way um, with no video and stuff. To be honest with you, I just feel kind of I don't I don't feel presentable in, in front of a can camera right now. Uh, just due to this quarantine and everything, you know, not having a haircut for damn near I don't even know how long right now. I'm, I think I'm losing track of when I had my last haircut and just overall just don't feel presentable at the moment so i'm gonna try something new you know just do like a i'm upload i'm gonna upload it to uh to my youtube if i can this way i think i can and um just do it that way you know um yeah, I mean, I hope it still gets some views. Or I don't know. I mean, it just is a podcast on YouTube, you know. But, yeah, just I just feel dirty, man. I just, ugh, I don't know. Like, I'm just ready for these barbershops to open up. I think the barbershops already opened up. I don't know yet. I think in Virginia Beach they already opened. I know some of the gyms are starting to open up, which that's kind of a bad idea. But, wait, I'm not the one. I'm not the person in charge of all this so yeah my views are nothing so anyway without further ado further ado excuse me let's get this thing started so what's good everyone and welcome to another episode of the tatted it where networking and programming is the culture i'm your host dominant mac and to, in today's episode i want to share a you know, just share a story and share my reasons on, I don't know, like, I just, I, I really want to share my thoughts on how uh, African Americans are already judged being, you know, already, they're, they're already judged through the door when entering the realm of information technology and programming. Um It's, it's been a thought in my mind for a very, very long time. Uh, I've The story I'm about to tell you, I've been I told a few times. And everything, and every time I, te every time I tell it to someone, it, it just makes me think and think. And, like, wow, like, what in the world? Like, why does it have to be that way? You know, why does it have to be, you know, the stereotype of if a black dude or a black woman gets into this field, they really don't have an idea of what's really going on. They don't know um, they're cheating off someone else or getting their work from somewhere else. They didn't, you know, come up with the idea on their own genuinely. They genuinely did not come up with their own idea. And it really, it really hurts me and it kind of makes me mad at the same time because you know it makes it seem like we're lazy pieces of shit and that we're you know we're not you know throughout history you can see that we were not lazy pieces of shit you know um now i'm probably being over dramatic with the over pieces of shit you know pieces of shit thing but um if you get my drift you know i i've been part of this before i have been put in a situation where my knowledge has been tested in in programming, um, this is way before I started IT. This was back in I want to say 2013. So I was at 2013, 2012, 2013. So my sophomore year, going into my junior year of college, and um, I was in this course. It was well at the time I was a compu computational science major, whatever the fuck that is. Um, yeah. Basically, I feel like the the school made up the damn, they made up the major. They made the name up. Like, it's computer science. That's all it is, computer science. So, um, anyway, I was, you know, it was my second year going to my third year of college. It was like second semester. And I was paired with a student, um, not st student, I was paired with a colleague of mine. And we were supposed to f basically improve on the Scrabble board game that we were building throughout the year. So basically, we, we were using the Scrabble, the board game, as a means of create, like, you know, 
solidifying what we learned throughout the class. And at the very end of the class, we were supposed to take, we were supposed to like improve on it every single, every not every single day, but every course, not every course, but every uh, every lesson that we are introduced to and we learn, we're supposed to take that lesson and improve upon the Scrabble board game that we are making, right? So it was, you know, last part of class, like going into the summertime, I'm ready, I'm getting ready, you know, and I, you know, the final project was to make a GUI interface, so a graphical user interface for the Scrabble board game, you know, so basically we made a board, like we were making the board game to where we physically see like the ch like the low, the letters that you see in real life and you can drag and drop them onto the board and add up the score and you know, um, make a random number generator for the bags of letters within there. So like when you go in to pick a letter or whatever, you randomly pick up a random letter and everything and how to add up the points when you make a word, all that stuff, right? So me and my colleague, Ben, I remember him, Ben, he's right out of um, Bluffton, South Carolina. And that's where I was at at the time at the University of South Carolina, Beaufort, um, the Gateway Campus. I think it's, yeah, the Gateway Campus. Um, so I was there, me and Ben paired up the, with each other to work on the game. And we work on this game relentlessly. Like, I mean, nights, I have, I spend nights being up until like three in the morning trying to make this game work or make a certain part of the game, you know, function right. I'm calling Ben, letting Ben know, like, hey, dude, like, does this work? I'm sending this to you. Or, hey, I got this to work and everything. How did you get your side to work and everything? And it was just killing, you know, both of us. And I was really trying to get this thing to work, you know, spending like countless hours you know, making sure this work, this operates, this everything and all that, right? So we spent like maybe a few months on it. I would say, yeah, I would say at least two months on it, maybe more. I mean, on the final, the final product, not, you know, the whole thing, but the final product of the project, right? So, you know, our professor at the time, I would not say his name and everything at this time. But like I said, I'm going to let you know, I know his name very vividly, very vividly, right? So he told us, he was like, uh, the way you will be graded on this final project is you you and your partner will come in um, and do an interview with me. And we would run, go through the game, go through the code, and you and your partner will explain what this part of the code does. And we will see how it works. So basically, you know, you just being given questions and you answer the questions based on the code that you have written. I'm like, okay, cool, that's fine, whatever. I know what you know. I know what I'm talking about. Ben damn sure know what he's talking about. You know, mind you, Ben is of Caucasian descent, so you know, I know, I definitely know what you know. What the terminology, syntax, everything like I know how everything functions on my part and on his code, and vice versa. Ben knows how to, you know, how, how he, uh, excuse me for I'm kind of tongue tied right now, but anyway, Ben knows his code as well as my code, so we both have a, a good, we both have good knowledge of each other's work, right. Of course, you know, for it to actually function properly, right? So, fast forward, and it comes to the day. It comes to the big interview, right? I think ours was, like, early. I want to say around mid-afternoon-ish, I would say. No, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was around mid, mid-afternoon-ish. mid Right, around noon. I said noon. I said around noon. We go in there and everything, and um, when we when we get there and everything, you know, we set everything up. We got everything, uh, I think, on a flash drive this time. We got everything on a flash drive. And we bring it into the teacher, put it in there and everything. We pull up the, you know, the project. So we pull up the project and we starts the interview. So he has a paper or whatever. And I, uh, also, so I started to figure out that some of the questions, like during the interview, he was asking questions that were not on the paper now since I think of it right now, since I'm thinking about it. Some of the questions he didn't even ask on the paper that he had. But anyway, interview starts and, uh, you know, he gives Ben, you know, asks Ben a couple of questions like, you know, where's this? How's the, how does the generator work? How does, like, where do you, where does the player, you know, enter the, his or her name? 
uh, where are the scores calculated, right? Maybe like two or three questions, right? Then he gets to me. When he gets to me, you know, he starts with, you know, hey, Mac, let's look at your code. So look at my code. Okay, you were responsible. You were responsible of generating the letters. So how did you, what where in the code did you find out how to generate the letters? I said, like, okay, right here. This is how you generate the letters here. Um, this is where, you know, we actually made like a pool of letters to where when you generate the, you know, when you make your rack, the letters that you you start off with in the game, you know, we take them out the pile and we make sure we we make sure we take account of the letters that we took out the bag, right? So he's like, okay, cool. Okay, where does um like where does where where how do you gen like randomly generate the letters? And I said, well, here we made a thing called bag, a function called bag, or a class called bag. Anyway, a class called bag, and within bag, the bag class, we made a means, we made a way of making a random number generator, and then whenever it randomly selects a number, that number corresponds with a letter. You know, so we randomly pick up letters out the alphabet and everything like that, and everything. Make we make sure that we count, have an account of how many letters, uh, how many of each letter is in the bag. So how many A's, how many B's, how many C's? He said, "Okay, cool." Then he starts asking me more questions, and more questions. And I start, and I'm starting as I'm answering these questions. I'm like, you know, Ben is just sitting there next to me. He's just sitting there next to me, like just sitting there quiet, and like literally, like he was anxious to answer a question or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm continuing, you know, answering his questions. And then he started going into Ben's code, the code that Ben actually wrote. And I was like, well, he never did that to Ben. He never went, he never asked Ben, you know, well, how did Mac, how did you understand what Mac was doing here or whatever, you know? And he started going into code that Ben was making out. So Ben was doing like the users, uh, the graphical user interface. He was more into that realm of the code, right? That that side of the board game. And I was like, well, you know, so and so and so and so. This is how you do this. That's how you do that. This is how you generate the users. This is how you, you know, keep a track of the user's score. This is how you add users into the game. And I'm I'm going through his code. Like, I know what his code is because I have looked at his code and I have tested his code. And I know what the syntax is. You know, I know how the code is ran. So, it's no surprise to me. You know, but he keeps on drilling me and drilling me and drilling me to a point in my mind. I was like, well, damn, does he did, does he think that I sit there and let Ben do all the work that I didn't do anything or did I copy and paste somebody else's work? Like. I felt some type of way about it and it really kind of got to, gotten to me, you know, and. um, After the I, I remember after the interview. Like Ben asked me like what was going on and I was like I don't I don't know like he was just he said like well he was ask asking you question after question after question like he barely asked me questions and I was like I, you tell me dude I don't know what's going on and from that point on like you know when you know when I went through that and I actually started thinking you know I started thinking like I went to my dorm room and I really started. I looked at the wall and I was like, why would he do that to me? And then I start, um, it, it, you know, just thinking about the class and, you know, how many African-Americans are in the class. And I was like, well, shit, ever since my cousin, because me and my cousin, we were both um, computer science majors. But he dropped, he, he uh, changed his major because he said it was too hard for him. And um, another friend of mine, I think he's. I know. I think he he dropped he 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 got out too. He got out of the computer science field, and I was the only black person, the only African American in the class. And I mean, I had a like I said, I have a good understanding of writing code, you know, um, and everything, you know. So I was like, you know, it's not that hard and everything, but it's just the fact that when. I don't know. Okay, well, okay, I'll tell you this. A coworker of mine, he, he put this in a good in perspective for me. Um, he said, Man, you really chose and the way he said it, I don't know, I mean probably a better way to say it, but he said the field that you chose being in I'm in the military in the navy, he said, You being an IT, you choose you chose the rate that's very um limited in diversity. 
you know, um, you have a majority of Caucasians in this field and not, you know, and not a lot of African Americans in the field, you know. And at first I was like, well, no, there's a lot of black people that I met that are ITs. But then the more I looked at it, like, look at your class, you know, the class that I was training with, I was the only black person in the class. Well, okay, well, one of them, he was black. Okay, yeah, two. I was only two black people in the class, you know. And um, I was like, well, damn, you, 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 he's, he's right, you know. It's not a lot of people in this field. Like, it's not a lot of people of of a darker skin on YouTube explaining how, you know, the basics of IT. What is the se- uh, what is the OSI model? The sev- you know, the seven layer OSI model. You know, what is the TCP/IP model? What is D- DHCP, dynamic co- dynamic host configuration protocol? Like, what is that? You know, what like what is all this you know about and everything? And it's now I know I'm referring back to my most previous, not my. Well, yeah, my, my most my recent my most recent video on minorities and in information technology, but you know, it's a rarity, you know, it's you don't see as many black people in this field, you know, especially in programming, you know. Um I've seen, you know, me going to the University of South Carolina, I I mean being at a being it a bigger population there, I have seen black people in there, but is not to the limit. It's not to the. It's not to the. I feel like it's not to my standards of how many black people should be in that field. You know. Um, I don't know. I, I just feel like we should. We should have an understanding of technology. We should. We, we really should have an understanding of technology, man. I mean, everything is going to the cloud. Everything is going. To, to you know everything is being done on the computer everything is being recorded on the computer you know what i'm saying like you can't you can't fight it you can't change it or whatever everything is digitally everything is digital everything you know there's no hard copies there's no nothing like this there's no handwritten no more everything is kept on a in a file in the cloud google drive um it's kept in azure you know it's kept is kept on, so, excuse me, on servers, you know, local servers or servers put, you know, somewhere located somewhere else, you know what I'm saying? So, it's, we have to have, we have to have that knowledge, you know, especially uh, black people and minorities, we have to have that knowledge and technology. And, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to start that because, Everybody on YouTube that I follow, you know, and I have nothing against them. They're smart. When I say smart and intelligent people, man, like they know they shit when it comes to networks. They know they shit become when it comes to security, securing networks. When it comes to programming, when it comes to making, um, making, uh, you know, analyzing data, you know, data science, all that stuff. You know, they wonderful, good people, you know, but they're all, and I'm sorry to say, is they're all white. You know, is no, is nobody I can relate to. Sometimes, you know, is nobody to relate to, and everything. Um, and it's, I'm not saying like it's, it's not hard to relate. It's not hard to sit there and uh not learn from them you know but it'll be you know it's it'll be nice to have someone of a light a light face to teach in this field to show other minorities show other black kids you know hispanics anybody of a you know of a minority to get into the field of technology you know and to show them that you know this is the avenue this is the avenue to that out to, to a better life, you know, these are one of the avenues to have a good life, you know, um, but, um, yeah, I just, I just want really, I really wanted to share what was on my mind, uh, I apologize for all the jumble of words and me speaking and everything, it was just a random, it literally was a random episode, you know, uh, so thank you for listening, Again, I apologize for no video that comes with this and everything. Like I said, I feel just 
you know, a brother feels subconscious about how he looks right now during this quarantine, man. My hair is messed up, like messed up. Like imagine the stock market, how it is, how the stock market is or whatever. When you see it on like Robin Hood and Acorn and like how it like the lines and everything, that's how my hairline feel looks like right now. So, uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, again, thank you for listening. Uh, Please, 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 please subscribe to my channel for more information on everything IT and programming and everything, you know, dealing with, you know, just thoughts on information technology, you know, just the thought how we can improve, improve the IT realm for those less fortunate or who's not exposed to it. Um. So please help me with that. Like I said, uh, comment comment down below. Leave your comments below. You know, ask me any kind of question. If you have any concerns about, you know, what I've said or if you feel the same way, what do you think are ways that we could expose minorities, expose black people, Hispanics, anybody of a minority to this field in rural areas, you know, because like I said, I, I come from a rural area from South Carolina and I wasn't exposed to this since I, until I was in college, you know, I mean, I was exposed, I would say, I, I said this, I was exposed to programming when I was my junior year in high school, but I really haven't gotten into the field until my, until I got into college. So let me, let me know down below in the comments and, you know, share your thoughts with me I, I, start a conversation, you know. Hit the like button if you like this content. Smash the subscribe button to stay on top of the latest videos. Um, I promise you this won't be all I'm doing. I will put, put out a bit more videos out and everything until I get a decent haircut. But, yeah, and if you don't like it, let me know why you don't like it. Let me know if I, I kind of messed up on a few things, you know. Let me know. You know, I really want to please voice your opinion, you know. Start a conversation, please. Um, so, again, thank you. And peace out.